Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Right. I mean, so, I mean, he's speaking the tongue. I mean. You want me to speak my tongue? You wouldn't understand it because it's a language that only he and I know. Only he knows what I'm saying. That's why it's called Holy Ghost. It's not a tongue for me to be able to interpret to you. Oh, I don't have the tongues of interpretation. There are people who have that gift, but that's not my gift. Can, can we hear it? Yeah, I, I don't mind speaking it to you. Let's hear it. So we're about to read about the Feast of the Lord that were given to who, Sister Stacey? The children of Israel, I agree. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. You know what a holy convocation is? It's a, it's a separate day, a right. special day that God's chosen people, who, was it, who were we talking about? The children of Israel, where they came together to celebrate one of God's feasts. All right, read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Uh -huh. Even these are my feasts. All right, now let's read about the first feast that we're about to actually enter into as the sun goes down. Read. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of the rest, of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. All right, so does the Pentecostal doctrine teach to keep the Sabbath? Yes. Okay, from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown? Okay, good, good. So we're on the right track. All right, let's get to verse 15. Verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths. Seven Sabbaths, seven weeks. So seven times seven is how many? 49. 49. All right, read. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. 50 days. So the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, so that's 1 plus 49 equals what? 50 days. All right, Deuteronomy 16 and 16. All right. We're going to make sure we got a clear understanding of Acts chapter 2 as we work our way down. Work it out. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. The book of, Deut the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. In the place which he shall choose. He chose Jerusalem. All right, read. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Also known as Passover. All right, do you all celebrate the Passover? Okay, good. And in the Feast of Weeks. Why is it called the Feast of Weeks? Because you got to number seven weeks. Seven weeks times seven is what? 49 plus the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is 50. Day of Pentecost, read. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Meaning you had to come with your proper sacrifice or tithe for that particular feast. Read. And you shall not appear before the Lord empty. I'm sorry, that was it. That was it. All right. Now let's go back to Acts chapter 2. So, so we set this, the foundation. Acts chapter 2 is talking about the day of Pentecost. Day of Pentecost was a feast day given to the who? Children of Israel. Right? Okay. And the reason why they were all together... 
on one accord in one place is because it was commanded that three times a year, all the males had to report back to Jerusalem to celebrate this feast. You follow me? All right. Read verse, verse one again. Verse one. The book of Acts chapter two, verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now who was the all? Okay. Okay, good. Were there any other people there? Any other nations? No, because only the Israelites kept God's laws. They were the only ones that received God's laws. They were the only ones applying God's laws. Right? Right. The only exception would have been if, if one of the Israelites had a heathen slave. Okay, but we don't got to get into that today. All right. That, that day is coming in the future if you apply God's laws. That's right. <laughs> and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Right, so were these Christians? Israelites? Right. Were these were these Christians? Like in the modern day, like were these Pentecostal Christians or were they Israelites keeping God's laws? In modern day or that day? Well, Israelites Israelites in that day and this day are still the same. That could be, you know, that's the interpretation to that person. Okay, all right. All right, we'll keep going. And they were and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And what were those other tongues? What does that mean? Our native language. Say it again. Other tongues speak his, his, his heavenly language. Okay, uh, give me an example. So Not my native that. tongue, so I wasn't speaking English. Oh, uh, were you Pentecostal? Right. I mean, so, I mean he's speaking a tongue, me. You want me to speak my tongue? You well, wouldn't understand it because it's a language that only he and I know. Only he knows what I'm saying. That's why it's called Holy Ghost. It's not a tongue for me to be able to interpret to you. Oh, I don't have the tongues of interpretation. There are people who have that gift, but that's not my gift. Can, can we hear it? Yeah, I, I don't mind speaking it to you. Let's hear Listen, not only do I have it, but my kids have it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, I mean, that's... We're about to get edified. Yeah, hey, I don't have the, the spirit of tongue interpretation, but if you guys got it, you know what I'm saying? So. Basically, when I want to speak to him, or I don't know what I need to get for myself, or I don't know what I need to ask him for, I'm told to talk to him in a language that only he understands. Only he understands. I don't even know what I'm asking for. But he knows what I'm asking for. By the utterance of my thought. Okay, so I will go, it's basically like, you know, I say, like, um, not really English, it's like, um, Okay. I don't know what I'm saying. I understand. I understand. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. All right. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. And then we're going to come back to Acts to, to deal with the tongue. To deal with the tongues. All right. Yeah. Was that chapter? 14. 14. All right. Okay. All right. All right. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I, I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Right. All right, so I want you to understand the, the, the back to Acts, right. I want you to understand why there was an interpreter for the tongues, okay? All right. So Acts chapter two, because we, we, we were taught that growing up, you know, the, the you know, the Bob, Bob, you know, that, that thing right there. So we, we were taught that, but this is the understanding in Acts chapter two. Right. Verse 5, Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Okay, so I want us to pause there right quick. If I'm a Jew, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, I'm not living in Jerusalem right now. Let's say I'm living in Arabia. What language do you think I would speak? Probably still the native language. If I was born and raised in Arabia. Oh, yeah, then that, that language of that nation. Correct. Just like, because we know the original language of the Bible in the Old Testament was what? Hebrew, right? 
And we know that we are the Israelites, right? But we were born and raised where? In America. So what language do we speak? American language. Right. So we want to just apply some of those basic principles to the scriptures. We are Jews, but we're, the, we're dwelling in a different land. So when we came back to Jerusalem, what would the American Jews, what language would they have been speaking? If they were going back to Jerusalem, it would still be the language they know. Which would have been English. English. Right, right. Okay, good. So you follow me. All right, keep going. Verse 6. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In his own language. So it wasn't an unknown language. Right. It was his own right. language. Right. Right. right? So that's the difference with the Pentecostal doctrine and the, the truth about Acts chapter 2. There, there was no unknown heavenly tongue that only you and God know. So, right. what, do you, so what is for you then? What is that? The spirit that the, the Russian mighty wind, what is that for you? Then? What is that spirit for you? What does that mean? We're gonna, we'll show you the spirit. We'll show you the spirit real quick. Give me Acts chapter 7. Huh? We'll give you Acts chapter 7. And I'm going to show you why they called it a heavenly tongue. All right? Because we think it's a heavenly tongue from the perspective of this guy right here and right. what he, what he taught up. us. Bring it up. Right? That Pentecostal doctrine came from this guy. Right. It didn't come from this guy. Right. Remember, the, the Bible describes Christ as a black man with woolly white hair. Peace, right? All right? But what did we learn coming out of slavery? We learned Christianity from the slave master. Right. I mean, for a long time, they... And the Christian pastors to this day still teach the same doctrine that we learned in slavery. So it doesn't matter if you go to a black church or not, with a black congregation or not, the doctrine is still his. Right, right. Christmas is still his. July 4th is still his. Right. Ba -ba -ba is still his. Right. You see what I'm saying? But the, the known, your own language, is the language that God gave, and I'm going to show you where he gave it. All right? Where, where we at? Okay. Yeah, somebody somebody Google would have found the, Pente the Pentecostal doctrine. But I'm going to show you the spirit, because we, we've been confused about what the spirit is also. Check this out. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Hey, and, now, and somebody find me in, uh, in Judges where uh, Samson had the spirit on. I think it's like 13 or something like that. Read. He stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Who was stiff-necked and uncircumcised? The Israelites. Read. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. So the Israelites have always resisted the Holy Ghost. You couldn't resist the Holy Ghost if it wasn't there. That's right. That means the Holy Ghost has always been there. In Genesis chapter 1, it said what? The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Which means what? The Spirit of God has always been there. It, it wasn't gone for a minute and then came back again. It was always here. Read. As your fathers did, so do ye. As your father, so your fathers resisted the Holy Ghost. And so do you resist the Holy Ghost. Give me verse 19. Verse 19. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave them change of and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. Right. It was another one that said he it was so heavy on him that he almost died of thirst. I thought that was in 13, but uh, we'll come back to it another point. All right. So the point that I want you to understand, what do we have here? We got that? All right, go ahead. Read that one. Charles Fox Parham. Charles F. Parham was an American, was an American preacher and evangelist together with William J. Seymour. Parham was one of the two central figures in the development and early spread of American Pentecostalism. All right, now let's see the picture. Let's see the picture. See that? That's the father of the doctrine that we learned here in America called Pentecostalism, right? So the, the, the author of that is not the God of this Bible. The author of Pentecost in the Bible is the most high God and it's a feast day for the Israelites to keep. It's not a denomination of Christianity. Christ, the Lord, the most high, didn't ordain Christianity as a religion at all. Bring it out, right? Right? Right. right. I mean, he, none of this should be a religion. It's, it's supposed to be in you. Like, it's not, it's not supposed to be inside four walls anyway. It's not, that's not what it is about. It's not a religion thing. 
Right. Anybody who say I got a religion, I mean, anybody got a religion, that's not really what it's supposed to be about. Okay. So, what I want you to understand is that there's a big difference between what your church teaches at a, as a Pentecostal mm -hmm. Christian and what the Bible teaches about the people who keep the day of Pentecost. That's right. right. So, so, so here's, here's another example. The, uh, the, the women who kept the day of Pentecost, give me 1 Corinthians 11. Bring it out. This is, so you, you were here when we went over the fringes, right? Right. So those women would have had fringes and a border of blue on their clothes. Right. Does your pastor teach that? We, we, yes, he does teach when it comes to a, uh, apparel. Girls, <laughs> women, and men. We don't dress like men, men don't dress like women. Right, right. And, you know, we don't do the, the, if you're on the pulpit, the clean shaven, we don't do any of that. So he's all in, in the hair, un, uncut hair, all that he's about. He's definitely about uh, the, the, the holiness. Okay, so everybody in your church wears fringes and a border of blue. Not, not, I wouldn't say fringes and a border of blue. Right. We all wear, girls wear what girls supposed to wear. Right. Boys wear what boys supposed to wear. What I'm we saying is the, the women are supposed to wear fringes and a border of blue. All Israelites are supposed to wear fringes and a border of blue. No, we don't wear fringes. Right, so he's not teaching you correctly according to the Bible. He's teaching us give, give me, give me uh, we'll, we'll show you what holy is. Give me uh, Romans chapter 7 and then give me the priest's lips. All right. Romans chapter 7. Holiness, because the holiness is a denomination of Christianity too. Holiness church, all of that, right? This is what holiness is according to the Bible. Romans 7 or what, 12? Yeah, give me verse 12. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Bring it up. Wherefore, the law is holy. The what? The law is holy. So if he teaches holiness, he has to take you to Numbers 15 and 38 and tells you that if you want to be holy, Sister, you got to put fringes in a border of blue on your clothes. That's right. There's, there's no other option. The, what does the Bible say what? It says law. His right. law. His law is his commandments. It doesn't say anything about fringes on his commandments. Okay, go back to Numbers 15. There's no... You see something? You know you don't fucked up, right? No. I said no. I said I put into the garage <laughs> at... No, no, no. You know you don't fucked up, right? No. I said... Wait a minute. I told you I put it doesn't list French. That's okay. not one of his laws. It's not one of his statutes. How, how many laws? How many laws and statutes are there? I want to say 11, 10. Okay, that, that's that's where you get tripped up. All right, there's over 600 laws. Right. There's about 613 laws, and one of those laws is that Israelites wear fringes and a border of blue. Right. That was a that was a commandment that we read it. We're gonna read it again. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. And bid them. Bid means command. That means this is a commandment. This is what the Lord said. Moses must command the Israelites. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. So as long as you're still generating. So Stacy had a daughter named Augusta. That means you're still generating. That means Stacy is supposed to have fringes on her clothes. And her daughter, Augusta, is supposed to have fringes on her clothes. And then she'll grow up one day and she'll get married to a husband. And after she gets married to a husband and has children, they'll continue to generate, which means what? They'll have fringes upon their clothes all the way until Christ comes back and he maybe he says different. That's right. You understand? Okay, so that's one of the laws that must be taught if anyone is teaching you to be holy. Right? So give me all the priest's lips. Give me the priest's lips. Malachi. Give me the priest's lips. And what, the, the, the dots that I want you to connect, Romans chapter 7 said that the law is holy, right? And there's over 600 laws. So there's many ways that you must apply your holiness, right? Your apparel, wearing a dress, all praises to the Most High Sister. You wearing a dress, that is a law. We'll show you that you're keeping that commandment, right? But there's more commandments in addition to that. This is what your priest is supposed to be teaching you. Read. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips. So the mouth of the pastor, the deacon, the bishop, what else do they call him? The apostle, the reverend, the elder. This is what's supposed to be coming out of his mouth. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Knowledge. What's that knowledge? Read. And they should seek the law. The what? The law at his mouth. What we're supposed to be seeking from the priests, the reverends, the bishops, the deacons, the elders, are God's laws. That's right. God's laws. Priest, bishop, how do I keep God's laws? He's going to tell you, sister, go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. 
This is what a priest would teach you. What scripture does he teach? What, what scripture does he take you to to prove that you got to wear a dress? He takes us. He shows us. He outlines it. Um, we, we got. Just like you got all these maps and pictures, so you got the same thing. Okay. Alright. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So if we teach a sister how to be holy in her apparel, this is the scripture that we're going to. In addition to that, what are some other things that we must do with our apparel to be holy? Um, it, can't, it can't be mixed. Okay. I, I can't wear a man garments. I can't wear mine. When you say mixed, what do you mean? Um, like, I can't um, have on a skirt and then say I'm going to wear, I don't know, or a man can't have on, say he can't have on pants, but he has on women Like a bra. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about cross dress? Yes. Okay, good, good. It, all right, I'm, I'm going to show you something else. Go to uh, further down in Deuteronomy 22 about uh, blending the garment. Deuteronomy 22, verse 11. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as, all, as of woolen and linen together. Right. So that dress that you put on, it's not supposed to be 50% wool and 50% cotton. Right. And then in that same chapter, the very next verse, read. Thou shalt make the fringes, thou shalt make the fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. Right. So you see that, sis? All these scriptures go together. The same book and chapter that told you you got to wear a dress tells you that that dress needs can't be woolen and linen together. And then the very next verse in that same book and chapter tells you to put fringes on. Bring it out. So the priest that's teaching you how to be holy got to teach you all this stuff. If not, he's leading you astray, right? Because we went back to Revelation. Go back to Revelation. Go, go to Zephaniah 1 and 8. Because this is what the Lord says about his chosen people, the Israelites, if they're not dressed appropriately when he returns. All right? This is what the priest's lips should be teaching you. These are the things that's supposed to be coming out of your mouth. This is going to prove whether he's really a priest or not. Right. Read. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. You know why it's going to be the Lord's sacrifice? Because a lot of his people got to die. That's right. Right. And we're going to show you a big majority of the people that's going to die, what they're going to look like. Read. That I will punish the princess. Uh-huh. And the king's children, and all such, and all such as, as, are clothed as are clothed with strange apparel. With strange apparel. Stacy, what strange apparel to the Most High God according to his commandments? Whatever don't have a friend. There you go, sister. There you go, sister. So you know what you, t you, know what you do with that information, sis? You show up to church the next time the doors are open after COVID-19. You walk up to your pastor and you say, I ain't coming back no more. That's right. Because right. right. you're not a real priest, and you ain't been teaching me the laws, thus saith the Lord. That's, That's right. right. I met some brothers that showed me more laws, that showed me more of a priesthood in 30 minutes than however long I've been at this church. I got this flyer. I turned it around. I saw the address, and I'm going to be there every Sabbath moving forward. That's, That's right. right. That's how you handle that, sis. That's, right. That's how you handle that, sis. And let, let me give you another. Let me give you another. First Corinthians 11. That was the one I was going to go to a little early. First Corinthians chapter 11. So, sister, what I want you to do is, is review that flyer. Go home, open your Bible. Make sure that we don't have a fabricated Bible up here to try to manipulate you into doing something God didn't tell you to do. Go back and fact check everything that we just said. But this is what I want you to do while you're fact checking and while you're studying the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 11. The book of First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man. And you're going to have to accept that one day. You're going to get married, and that oh, and that, ma that man is going to be your head. That's right. You're going to be created for him. The kids underneath me, yes. There you go. All praises, all praises. So, you, sister, you actually don't have as far to go as many other people. You know what I mean? But you got to put away this man out of your mind. That's right. This man is the father of that lie that taught you to bop, bop, baloo, bop, and there's a... I still, you can't go yet, because I still got to show you why that, what the heavenly language is. All right? You got to stay there for a minute. 
and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So it was hot out here, right? The sun was out and it was beaming on us. What didn't you see on the head of any of these men out here? No, no covering, no hats, no uh, bucket hats, no bandana, nothing on top of our head. Why? Because we're prophet. This is the midst of prophecy right now. When we deal with the Bible, we're dealing with prophecy. Right. All right. So that's the law for a man when it comes to studying this Bible. We can't have our head covered. That's right. All right. But there's a law for a sister as well. Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Right. So what does that mean, sis? That means in order for me to speak on him, I got to be covered. It means you got to have a head wrap on. You follow me? Yeah. All right. You got to have a head wrap on. So, like, if you had one with you now, if you if you had that understanding, then when you came up to the camp, all praises, then you would cover your head. Because we're studying the scriptures together. All right? Uh, go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Is that the one that mentions the heavenly language? Let me see. Uh, yeah, uh, Do I speak yeah, with the sound? Yeah, yeah. 15, 14. Okay. No, no. I, this is what I want. Right. And of angels. And I'm going to show you. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So this was the last part I wanted to dissect in your mind before you head it up. So it said, though I speak with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. All right. Let's say I'm speaking. I, so let's, Paul made this statement. But let's say I'm making that statement. What would be the tongue of men? Probably the, the common language. There you go. This is the shop, man. This is the shop. So the, the, the tongues of men would be the common tongue that everybody understands. Right? So what would be the tongues of angels? That, that's the part that I want to declare. Heavenly. For me, it's heavenly language. That's wrong. That's wrong. And I'm going I'm to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 11. So what is the tongue of angels? I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you. This, this way you gotta un, you gotta un, sis, stay. Just be patient. Just be patient. I'm gonna explain it to you. It's up to the Lord whether you receive it or not. All right. But I'm gonna explain it to you. All right. You're gonna walk away with a clear understanding whether you apply it or not. That's up to you and the Lord. All right. Genesis chapter 11, verse one. The book of Genesis chapter 11, verse one. And the whole earth was one of one language. What was that language? Hebrew. The ancient, original Hebrew. Right? And of one speech. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Sinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. So this is the Tower of Babel, right? The earth had just got flooded, and these people want to try to avoid the next one. Okay. Right. Yeah, go ahead and get down. What, uh, give me verse 5. Let me see. Verse 5. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. So the Lord came down to the earth. You think he traveled by himself? Probably not. Right. Would the President of the United States ever travel by himself? No. So he came with his entourage. There you go. There you go. So just use your imagination as we read in the scripture. Read. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Because he won't talk to himself, right? Read. And they have all one language. And this that they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Uh -huh. Go to, let us go down. Whoa, 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 read it again. Go to, let us go down. Let us go down. So the Lord and his entourage, he spoke to him and he said what? Let us, who was he talking about? The angels. Let us go down and what? Go to, let us go down and there confound their language uh -huh. that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. 
The tongues of angels are all the other languages that the angels gave to the men in the Tower of Babel. Sis. They were all known languages. So what we what we know and understand is what? Chinese, Japanese, uh, Swahili, give me some more languages, come on, Arabic, Vietnamese, German, Latin, all these languages were given by who, sis? The angels, the angels. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Bring it out. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is what a priest looks like, my sister. Bring it out. Giving you the true understanding of the Bible. That's right. That's right. The, the, the prophecy says your eyes will see your teaching. That's, that's right. right. right? And they won't be removed from a corner anymore. That's right. Into corners. Into corners anymore. Read that again. The book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 1. Uh -huh. Though I speak with the tongues of men, his common language, read. And of angels. And of angels, meaning what Paul spoke multiple languages. That's right. He was an educated brother, right? So he could speak Greek. He could speak Latin. Latin. He could speak right. Hebrew, right? Not bop, bop, baloo, bop, bop. No, that sister, that's that's of the devil. That's called that's called glossolalia. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.